What's up everybody? It's Dustin, Berserker Bear, with another edition of Bushwhack and Tartaria. Today I'm at the Assumption RC Church, 435 Amherst Street. We're going to go through some pictures. We're going to go through uh, to detail exactly what the architectural style is. Reference it against the old book that I have, that I use, from copyright date 1937. Get that for you. We're going to go over some history, some literature from a couple different articles that I found in my uh, search for this place on the internet and there's a couple of anomalous points that I have to bring up and we're gonna go through that also some old pictures again we're gonna reference and correlate ourselves on these old maps one from 1980 excuse me one from 1880 another one from 1902 we're going to find where we are on these maps. We're going to get a little into a little bit of gravy about the Pan American Exposition. Got another map for you with some good reference points. Okay. Correlate against this map also that I found, which is a very cool tool because it's got some. It's got the zoning, the property zoning, the lots, and everything I could use that. That's very. That's very key. We'll do uh, again some Pan American Exposition gravy. This is the actual layout on how it looked over, how it looked, and how it looks over the old, uh, the current format of Buffalo, if you will. If I said that properly, whatever. This is how it will look now. And again, we're just going to do some anomalous searches here, and um, we're going to relate to some old books that I show and that I found on archive.org that reference the Beltline. The Beltline is the the train track network in and throughout Buffalo. Okay. And uh, again, some boots on the ground, some on the scene pictures. Bushwhack and Tartaria. Again, we are at the Assumption RC Church, Amherst Street, Buffalo, New York. I hope you like it. Let's get right into it. All right. This is the place. It's one of the one of the biggest churches in Buffalo, I think, behind the Basilica. Although the Basilica is not in Buffalo, that's in Lackawanna. Uh, this is one of the biggest. So that's where I was today. There's some real cool footage of uh, a bird that I got, a raptor, a bird of prey. Perched up on top of this building. Actually, it was on top of this building. Let's, I'll show you. As I was walking around, I got a bird of prey, which is a raptor, effectively. I'm not sure what kind of bird it is. Maybe you guys can help me out with it. But it was perched right up here. Got some pretty cool footage of it. I'm a very big fan of birds of prey. And then I got it in these in these trees over here too. So I got you around. Uh, I walk around it. We'll get you a, a walk around shot and some close up pictures. And again, we'll go over the uh, the literature. And I'm going to point out some anomalies that I I believe number one uh, construction photo they have and there are definitely some anomalous points in the literature which have discrepancies in, in the, the start date, construction date of this place. So let's get you the boots on the ground and let's go over the literature for another edition of Bushwhack and Tartaria with Berserker Bear. Hope you like it. Let's get into it. So here we are. The Assumption Church. Now one of my buddies actually worked at the, this, um, the recreational center for Assumption which is actually down the street. It's not the, in the actual church itself, but even though this is a really big complex, the actual Boys and Girls Club of, of Assumption is down further on Amherst Street. So here we are. Now this is a video that I took. I'm just gonna, it was pretty cold that day, or ex excuse me, it was pretty cold today, 30 degrees out, below freezing. So I was holding the, it's my phone that I use and my fingers were freezing by the end of it. I'm surprised that I kept the um, the camera straight. But yeah, just a very, very impressive structure. This would be considered, or it was built in the Romanesque revival architectural style. Just beautiful. At the wrought iron fence. Y'all know what that is. 
and the be beautiful windows. We're, we're, we'll go through the stained glass windows. They have pictures of the inside of this place of the of the interior. It's going to be a good uh, show for you. I hope that you really like it. It's um, a lot of a lot of content I have here for this one. It's and go figure because it is one of the biggest churches in Buffalo. Look at that, the tale of the two towers, huh? It reminds me of certainly reminds me of. Bill, or you know, not Bilbo. Bilbo was Bilbo is the Hobbit. Frodo and Sam. Look at now. Do we have cymatic patterns? I got some better pictures, or I think I got some more close-up pictures of those patterns a little bit down the road. But yeah, the two towers reminds me of it's the second book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. The first one being the Fellowship of the Ring. The second one being the Two Towers. Third one being Return of the King. Now, that's a, a book that this reminded me of. As I was going back between these two buildings, and being that I'm near a church, I got a really, not spooky feeling, but it reminded me kind of, sort of, of the, the movie Exorcist in the alleyway behind the house where the priest falls down the stairs. Um, I kind of got that feeling a little bit. So, um, there goes your... your. Um, I'm going to try to drop a... This is a shout-out to my boy, Mr. Brees. Uh, my man from... Uh, my man from down under. My man from down south from down under. But... Um, yeah, I'm dropping a movie, a, a movie reference every time. When I was walking through here, for some reason I got that feeling like I was back in the alleyway behind. Oh, uh, what's her Reagan? Her name Reagan in the movie. Now look and notice the different styles here. There's only one. There's only one uh, in the literature, in the mainstream literature that we're going to reference. Mind you, there's nothing in. Um, there's no Wikipedia page for this thing. It's supposed to be the second biggest. Look at all that red brick. Look at all that. Just absolutely beautiful. So, there's nothing in the literature that cites a couple different construction phases, even though it looks like there are. Sot cracking. So yeah, I mean, like I said, you got. Now, is this the foundation? Is this the? But again, the anomalies that I found in the literature. What we got there? Copper. <laughs> um, copper downspouts for sure. Uh. I'm not sure what I was saying, but I do find that there are, are some definitely uh, discrepancies in reading when this place was established, when it was erected, when it was, uh, they, they have a different date for when it was completed or as to when it was sanctioned. That's, it, to me, it's very confusing. Okay, we'll go over that though. There's three different articles that I cite. Oh yeah, it wasn't in Wikipedia either wasn't an info galactic either that's that's confusing to me this is a beautiful structure and if it is one of the biggest churches in in buffalo said to have been built some some time between 1913 and 1908 it's kind of a little bit of a hint at the discrepancy there literally it's that it's that big of a window for a place like this um yeah for them to, there to be no like um Citable or good footage of this thing being built, or even the fact that they have conflicting dates, uh, raises some serious questions in this research that we're all we're all involved in, and it's rightfully so, because again, I'm going to show an example of a, a building that we know the start date of and we know the end date of, and. They put it out there in in the main in the in the mainstream in the literature the same the same medium that I'm grabbing from 
the research that I use for this work, I'm going to use the same to look up a building that we know the start date and know the end date of, for an example, as to why they can't have the same information provided from a building that we uh, are alleged to have known the start date of and the end date of. Legitimate question, as far as I am concerned for you. Now, a, a key feature, I think, in these Romanesque architectural styles, uh, architectural styles are these rotundas that come off the back of these cross-shaped uh, footprints. But I know, I know uh, architectural styles are all kind of similar and they just put different names on them for different regions they come from maybe and that, that's kind of uh, that's confusing as well from like Greek to even the Germanic Gothic stuff because this is th this is this is Romanesque revival this is effectively the same architectural style as what I did the uh, brick wall there is what I did the um, the Buffalo Psych Center but it looks tremendously different to me this is red brick you know there's no distinction between the actual brick it's just style that's a good point because the psych center was built with specifically and noticeably different bricks I think you guys would pick up on that even though they're still labeled as two of the same architectural styles so that's that's an anomaly also I think because the psych center is not built with these red bricks this whole thing is red bricked out and speaking of red brick um, we got some under I, I found some under facade yeah look at that you just, I, just want, I wanted to get a sense of scale and now for where you let's get a little bit of orientation here right now as I'm backing up I'm like right back in this area so I'm like backing up you know like backing up backing up backing up and uh, that's that's where I'm at effectively I'm trying to walk around the whole complex that'll be my format or at least keep me on format so that's where I am okay now that's facing towards Buffalo State that's facing towards the psych center all right S100. Okay, I'm facing the psych center. I, I kind of wanted to give that for orientation, even though I just did. But that would be like I'm standing right here looking this way. Let's actually see if we can see that. Yeah, the flagpole is on the field somewhere. Okay. And of course, of course, we got to, you know, we have f fields around here. A baseball field, football field. Michelle Gibson's done work on those things. There's always interesting stuff around those. There really is. So that's where I am. I'm right here. And I wanted to give you a reference point. Now, when we get through the literature, they did build a building, and I'm not sure. So this one, it's got the same architectural style. It's got the the build out up top like, like the rotunda on the church does. But this building isn't isn't cited necessarily in the when I do when I'm looking at the um, looking up on the internet for research. It's not just it's. I don't think that it's cited. And look, yeah, you see, it's very ornate up there, very ornate, very pretty. And this is obviously repurposed. What was in here? You got the sun. Were these things in there formerly, or what? A, they look like little portholes. Look at that. Sun crest. Now, this is an interesting part. I can understand how this can be facade or substructure or f um, foundational work. But w what's interesting to me is what I see. Now, Notice, notice what's going on here. Well, do you tell me what you guys think? Timestamp and tell me what, what we're seeing here. Like, were these cut in? And then you have obviously the brick underneath. I show that. 
Um, cause I, but this looks newer brick and then like what I want to see is this looks like the older red brick. I, you know, I don't know. Here we go. Oh, and I forgot you, we have, um, uh, yeah, I think I did say that we have a construction photo, a construction photo, of course. And now there you go. Now, okay. Now a commenter had, had was a uh, interesting commenter was inquiring let's just say professionally inquiring if I had known what the definition of the term in situ means. And yeah, I I know what the term in situ means. It means finding it in nature in in, in its place as it sits. Now, for example, that that would be right there, that would be in situ. It's sit sitting in place in nature as you find it. Or if you come across an obelisk in the Sierra Desert buried in sand, before anybody has touched it to excavate it for research purposes, that's called in situ. There you go. So yeah, what do we see here? You guys see what you see the the you see the format or the construction? It seems like there was a couple different. And then why don't they just keep the brick or the the red brick going all the way down? That looks like concrete to me. Well, I wanted you to see that. A pipe. Tell me what you guys think. I always appreciate your feedback and your insight. I love your comments. I love your support. Thank you all very much. It means the world to me. It really does. From my my commenters and my YouTube to my to my my research team, uh, Miwi, that Campbell for of that autodidactic setup. Thank you, Cam, and thank you all the 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 research supporters over there. It means the world to me. I know you guys like it, and I like it just as much. Okay, it's for you guys. So this is the path behind. Now this is where I'm walking up, and I notice something up on um, up on the perch. Okay, let's get a reference for you. I'm walking right through here. Okay. Thought that was cool. Need a little bit of maintenance there, huh? Okay, you guys see something up there? Now, any bird watchers might know what that bird is right now. I can't tell you what it is. I know we have red tailed hawks here, we have turkey buzzards here. Um, I don't know what that one is offhand. I'll send a shout out to. Uh, Colombo bear because I know he likes but look at that beautiful I was so excited when I seen that I'm like what is that up there and I'm telling you big I think it was big there's some more close up uh, of it coming up you know uh, oh here we go this is the actual video of it while it's on the roof um, I also have it in the tree like I said so we'll just commentate through. It was just sitting up there chilling. My, now, okay, mind you, the mind the build out, my, mind the build out, mind the beautiful red brick build out also. <laughs> but yeah, how um, who needs Discovery Channel when you got Berserker Bear? You know, catching. I'll just label it a raptor for right now. Okay, that that's a general term that applies to all birds of prey. And I'll be looking for the answer of what this thing is in the comments. There's I, again, I have another close-up of it. Actually, it, it swoops down. I don't get. I was hoping to get it, you know, opening up. But again, you got to stay on task, right? But then later on, I was excited to get that. Later on, he pops up again, and then now it's right, so right now. It's back to um, to the task at hand. Interesting building here. Just an addition, but like what I'm noticing is like 
retrofitted is that common um, old foundation that's understandable I guess because there were old houses here like okay so if we go into now again where we are here's the state hospital Buffalo State is right behind the Buffalo State Hospital right here so I was looking across what where we effectively are and we're on Germain Street okay it's in between Germain and Peter okay so right here is where that church would be now I'm not saying that this map is true keep that in mind okay the general layout is true but it, it actually grabbles the Pan American Exposition pretty pretty bad actually look at how much it it goes over this whole look at it in this writing right here it completely goes over and ruins this portion this whole portion of, of, of the expo and I think that that's a smearing I mean, it's easier to cover up the fact that it probably may have been there before in my opinion so where was I we were okay I was explaining that yes completely understandable that there, there could be old foundations there that that's being built on because obviously in this old map which again I'm not saying is 100% true but uh, for what we're what I'm trying to explain here I could see that happening I could see that there being some old foundations of these old old um, houses underneath this if what they're saying per the literature is true but you know a part of me thinks that this is BS what we're looking at and that church was supposed to be here in this picture at the time it was taken and um, the people who had the final say the censorship board before the before it gets released may have smeared it in my opinion that's a possibility here we go now I see him I, I notice him fly into the tree so I didn't get him while he was flying but then I heard a couple other squawking crows or ravens I think that he he must have stole something from their nest because he looks like he's ripping so now I'm not sure if he's cleaning his talons but this is a pretty long video, two minute video we're just gonna sit here and watch him and see if you can hear Of course, I got the, the Michael Myers breathing going on. There you go. Oh, yeah, he does have something. That's the tail right there. Oh! I might have to put a. I might. So I wonder if he stole that, cause cause those two crows were were, were squawking, squawking. He's going to town. He's going to town on something, definitely. I didn't notice that that tail was hanging down. I thought he might have been cleaning his talons or maybe pulling at the bark. He definitely <laughs> was eating something. Wow. Yeah, so there you go. Bushwhack and Tartaria. You get a little bit of dose of uh, the History Channel or, or uh, more so like the Discovery Channel. There they go. Then they dipped. Fugin and Munin. Odin's, Odin's Ravens. Let me find out. My man right here stole Fugin and Munin's Ravens. <laughs> stole from them. Wow. Very cool. Back to back to work, right? Not really work though. I love doing this, so that that little kind of stuff is um that that stuff is definitely extra extra bonus for sure. That was beautiful. So we're back. Okay, yeah. What do you see here? Obviously there's brick underneath, but it looks So I guess what I'm saying is it looks distinctly different from the brick that's up a little bit. Maybe because it's 
on the ground level and um, water and ice and stuff like that that's completely understandable could be different color because all this stuff is running off and kind of coating it you know that just looks like an interesting foundational type to me it's it's not solid especially that we have the rain well everybody has rain but we have the the freeze and thaw cycle of water it gets into these cracks you know and freezes and expands and makes cracks bigger effectively so what do you guys see spackling over here you know um, is that normal for this type of building for this type of construction I I don't know it just looks anomalous to me when they say that it was built once similar to the Kensington Tower when I looked into it and I see yeah, what is this stuff like obviously these are so yeah obviously these are um, filled in cinder block after the fact right look at these notches right here is I'm back in the cut right back in one of these little nooks right here There's always graffiti somewhere, you know? Someone's always trying to tag something up somewhere. Room 107, huh? I thought that was cool. I thought that was cool, too. So I'm making my way around. Got some repair work that was done. Got some happy little trees there. Now look, look at that picture. If it wasn't for these power cables you know it's just like oh I had, and I'm on a side here where there's a parking lot so now I'm over here in this area trying to get a uh, let's do that I'm over here get you that angle yeah you know I gotta get the try to get the power lines out of the way but I was angling up so you wouldn't see the all the cars you know, I'm just trying to get the only the architecture. Just beautiful. Also how big it is too, because like I said, you could see it from the throughway, the Skajakwita, as you're driving up it. Now this is in that street. The curbs are all cobblestone curbs, thought that was pretty cool. Old school. Look at that. You think that they would want to detail the construction of something so gorgeous, you know, and beautiful and ornate and intricate, and there you go. Now, I, I recommend looking up cymatic patterns. My man, Andrew Booth, another... Um, research uh, contributor on MeWe had a great video recently and cited cymatic patterns and um, I know it looks like a flower but some certain cymatic patterns make flowers I'm not sure if these are a cymatic pattern but it's worth looking into Looks like they're doing some repair work there. They're putting a new one on. I never, I didn't know what these are. I wanted to get a close-up picture. There's some more. We're, we'll, we'll go over it a little bit. But I, I, did they used to have stuff in here? You think because they're recessed so much, and then looks like there was a plaque on there. There's a. There, these things are on both sides. That's up there, actually, right there. Look at that. Reminds me of the game, like I, I said this before, but it reminds me of the game because you climb on buildings that are similar to this in, oh, what's it, Assassin's Creed Syndicate? 
Just look at that. Domage, for sure. Copper, copper domage. Were there crests in here before? What were they doing with these domes? We presume that we know. Got spire up there. Are they still grabbing this stuff? I mean, is this stuff still operable? Oh, look what happened there. I just noticed that. Does that look like damage? It does, doesn't it? What would damage that? Like that. I mean, I know copper's a soft metal, but still. Now that looks a little more like... Maybe a little more like the psych center, but... This stuff, no. This is its own individual red brick style and that's not how this uh, Buffalo Psych Center was look at that very cool you know you wouldn't if you looked looked at just this you know you think it was somewhere in Europe that's why I love these things I love my city because these things are all over the place hundreds I, I could do hundreds of them yeah I think that there might have been I don't know maybe these opened before or there was something set in there gold maybe Cool picture right there. Very, very, Im very impressive, very big. And now, oh yeah, just to get some orientation. Um, and this, this neck, neck of the woods here. I'm trying to walk around and get a front view. Just absolutely beautiful. Sorry about that. Yeah, I like this picture a lot. Got the whole front. And it's interesting too. Someone said that the clocks, I think a commenter or maybe a, a, on MeWe, clocks look like they've been retrofitted. And I think I have proof of that, like they were used for something else before. Like maybe this, the, whatever was in here was also up in these recesses and the clocks were just put in after the fact now this is a building across the street this building right here it's got the arch one arch is is true and the other arch look at this yeah all building right in here check this out guys the old old build old world buildings are everywhere Arches, arches, big opening here, arches back there. Got the flashing up top, so it probably at one point in time went a lot higher, or they just knocked off the, the beautiful build out. Yeah, see, look at that. Arches, arches. Now this, now this arch has the the break in it. I think that that's indicative of indicative of an usurping. It's my opinion. You know, that's like this is the firmament, and then this symbolizes Babel breaking it, like how the Disney castle breaks the when the when in the Disney symbol when that the star goes over it. A lot of you guys don't realize, but it's in symbolic of the firmament, and that the actual castle piercing it is alluding to the Tower of Babel and what they were trying to do with that. In my opinion, could it be, could it be? Yeah, look at that one too. Uh, first, now, oh yeah, another another thing to um, point out here. Now this, now this church is not raised up on a mound. There's no mound up. But it does have a first floor entrance. Now that's super interesting to me. And I wanted to, maybe I'll show you something... to get your mind thinking a certain way. Now when we say mud flood, this is kind of what we mean. Now there doesn't always need to be a mound up. 
and when we say looks like first four windows this will give you guys a good idea so this is flat ground just like it is around this area excuse me you know what we'll just go here so in and around a lot of other churches maybe the ones that don't have brick that might be an interesting feature have a mound or they look like they're mounded up and maybe I have like a sub level I'm not necessarily sure this one has that definitely doesn't have the mound but I don't know if it has a sub level is what I'm saying and it Berserker Bear so yeah I wanted to show you that picture and get it in your mind this is what we're talking about how mud flooded buildings might look and that they're retrofitted to accommodate for the fact that a lot of it's under the ground that might get you this this um, picture might get you guys um, on board that kind of train of thought if you will so there you go that's cool just a you know you wonder I like that's why I'm, I'm so intrigued about oh where are the construction pictures did they come across any were there any major hurdles in trying to line the thing up or are they both the exact same height at you know like that kind of stuff you would think that they would have as far as trivia because I, I, I like that kind of stuff um, well here we go now this is pretty special I hope you can hear this because when I got in my car and was getting ready to leave they started um, the bell started ringing loud I had no idea how long it was going to go for. I just thought it was absolutely phenomenal. Thirty degrees out. So that's it for the uh, on the scene pictures. Now let's. This is um, Buffalo as an architectural museum. Very good website that I use for. Effectively, it's a syllabus that I can just work off of uh, locations in Buffalo. But yeah, this has the exterior, and we did that. Now the inside of this place is awesome too. Let's go into the interior look at that that's the rotunda in the back in the altar there you go Romanesque revival there you got some key names and some words there I didn't want to walk in I was thinking about going in there but I thought better of it it was in mass or people were walking in some people were walking in without the mask on I noticed that but I think that they were holding a mass and I was gonna walk in I certainly wasn't gonna walk in and start taking pictures but I was thinking of going in there yeah, beautiful beautiful murals interesting symbology there beautiful so yeah this is the Assumption Church in Buffalo that's the inside and we'll get you some there are a lot of murals in this place wow well I guess it's one of the biggest churches in Buffalo as they say we're gonna go over that right now 
That might be a Jesuit cross. Flanking the IHS, parted and fretted, is divided, interlaced, found, triple in the coat of the flag of the Greater Vancouver British Columbia Transportation Authority Police Service. Doesn't necessarily cite the Jesuits, but that looks like a Jesuit symbol to me. Look at that. Beautiful. Wow. Maybe I should have went in there. Wow. Okay, so those are those. Those are what we were looking at from outside. That might not be somatic patterns, but it might be. Actually, it might be somatic patterns. I would highly recommend that you go look into that. Somatic pattern on a vibrating plate is good keywords for you. Wow, that's a good picture for scale. I didn't see that one. Got an M there. Wheat, okay, wheat, doves, Jesus, just beautiful. This is getting the, let's see the pole light. Wow, look at that. Very cool. Pretty ornate. Quite ornate. And again, you guys can go look at this stuff. So, now that is uh, a quick of uh, of the interior. It's about all of them. And oh, let's see what the station of the cross is. Now let's get into the literature. There's a another anomaly too that I found that I put a post up on my community tab. That um, said that I was going to do this, this location, and at the time it did have a website that I was going to, and actually you can see that here. It's right here, okay. And now I try going to it, and it's it's defunct. It's no longer available. Very interesting, especially that when I when I put up that picture again on my YouTube channel, on my community tab this was available to go to and not, now it's not anymore see look it's still loading I'm not, I'm not sure if you can see that but yeah look there you go see why is it even there then you know they obviously didn't update it so this this was viable last last week week and a half ago last week very interesting so okay here we go now that is uh, Romanesque revival and here are the examples. It's very, you know, it's the the cross footprint is indicative for sure. And you have rotunda action. I see here, like like right here. Okay. Rotunda here. Um, but there's nothing. I mean, you got towers and stuff. It just these towers look like the towers of Bologna, to me. So it's just I it, it looks it, it could look similar to Greek as far as I'm concerned. So that's confusing. Okay, so in the late 1870s, Black Rock area became home to a number of Polish immigrants. At the time, the area was settled predominantly by Germans. These Poles found it increasingly difficult to attend the then established Polish parishes of St. Stanislaus on Peckham Street and St. Adelbert's on Stanislaus Street. What? Well, that's kind of confusing. They also did not feel comfortable in the then German parish of St. Francis Xavier on East Street. The whole uh, people not getting along narrative. Okay. I guess I get it. As a number of immigrants in the area increased in the 1880s, important date, uh, a need to develop for a need developed for a church to serve them. In the spring of 1888, another very important date as far as changing of history, there seems to be a lot happening in, or they, they cite this date a lot for uh, when we're looking up research like this. 1888 comes up a lot. 
Okay, in the spring of 1888, 30 Polish families gathered. Illuminati confirmed. The number 30. Uh, of course, not meaning anything about Polish. Just the number 30. So, anyway, Polish families gathered in St. Francis Parish Hall and discussed the possibility of establishing their own parish. They sent their request to Bishop Stephen Ryan, who in turn appointed Reverend Theopol Kozlowski as the first pastor. Later that year, Reverend Kozlowski purchased land in, uh, on the south of Amherst Street. Okay, that is south of Amherst Street, which would be Grant and Amherst Street. This is Amherst Street right here. See, Amherst, boom. Okay. Between Germain and Peter, those two streets. Okay, you can actually see them. Germain and Peter. There we go, boom. All right. On September the 8th, 1888, the congregation placed Cornerstone, the first house of worship. Now, that first house of worship is this two-story building right here. We're going to get into that. And we're going to extrapolate on the history. Okay. 26 was completed. Two-story. Okay, there you go. The cornerstone of worship completed on November 21st, November. A modest two-story brick building. Now, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess... Oh no, did I, did I close? Nope. Does that, there's a better picture of it, I'm sorry about it, I got a little confused where I was. I mean, does that look modest? You got the build out, you got, you got arches, you got what seemed to be build out, a bunch of chimneys. I mean, what are those chimneys for? I mean, if that's a, if that's a modest parish, what's going on with these chimneys okay and you got a belfry up there that doesn't look modest that actually looks like it's very well very well built so let's get back into what they say where was I okay here we go modest Sorry about that. By 1909, the need for a larger house of worship was apparent. So they're saying that that modest parish wasn't big enough. Okay, and by 1909, after they made it in 1888, so uh, 20 years, they're like, in 20 years, the population expanded so much that they needed a house bigger that would suit almost, that, that would seat almost, look here, 1,500 people or 1,600 people, that doesn't add up to me. So from modest to 1,500 people, okay. By 1909, the need for a larger worship was a uh, house of worship was apparent. We're looking for dates now. Okay, this is the first article, and we have a date. On August 15, 1914, the congregation placed a cornerstone for the first new house of worship for their new house of worship rather at the time the building fund began many years previous contained 83,000 within one year the church was completed and dedicated okay so it says 1914 1914 August 15th 1914 and within one year it was completed and dedicated okay Romanesque and you can do your research here. I'll put these articles in the in the video, in the description box. Second article. 1880s. We're going to look for 1888, 1889. That's the parish. The parish story matches up. Both the neighborhood and Assumption Parish grew rapidly. 
Soon the congregation needed more room, just like the first article talked about. In 1913, they raised more money, hired a noted local architect, and began building a large, striking new church adjacent to the old one. And there's their construction photo right there. Okay. That's what they're putting forth as the construction photo. Vanilla sky. Okay. Uh, we have a lever here. But what is that lever? Lever? Lever two? What are they? What are they hoisting up here? This is literally a construction photo. I seriously have questions. You wouldn't want to do a, a series of, of pictures of the progression of it. They have older videos from older time periods that show them disassembling huge buildings in Europe. When they're assembling them here in America, they don't take video footage of it or at least a time lapse or at least pictures of it going up. I highly doubt it, especially a building built like that in Buffalo at that time. Also, in 1913, they raised more money, hired the architect. There you go. The new church building, designed in Romanesque revival style, was completed in 1914. doesn't give a uh, initiation date this is the second article second article I have cited as same parish story. gives a starting date well it doesn't say starting date so I'm a little confused here it says in 1913 they raised more money hired a noted local architect and began building okay so yeah in 1913 they began building so in the first article uh, it says that they began building in 1914. Okay, there we go. That's where I got confused. I was looking at the wrong thing here because I wrote this stuff down. One of the first times I wrote anything down because this was confusing to me. The first article cites, this is very important because this is a, bi a major landmark here in Buffalo. It's one of the, again, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but like this is one of the biggest churches in the city of Buffalo. And they're, the first two articles, one says, 1914 and the second one literally states that they began in 1913 okay and the architect of course died before construction was very of <laughs> guys I just noticed that died before construction was very far along the new church building designed in Romanesque revival style was completed in 1914 meanwhile the church in the in the first article it cites that it was initiated in 1914. Second article says that it was completed at that time. Okay, are we, are we are you following along here? Anomaly number one. And then it was built for 1,600 people. Let's go to the third article, the one that has the picture of this old school picture right here, pretty cool picture, and the the modest the mo the modest um, the modest parish with uh, four four chimneys. You know, okay. Seeds, uh, same beginning story, and the parish, the parish dates match up. Let's get into, of course, 1888. Remember, I said 1888. Picture by 19. Okay, this is the really big discrepancy in this one. Like the rest of Buffalo, Assumption expanded through the end of the 19th century. By 1903, it was clear to Father Louis Chodecki that a larger, more impressive church would be needed for his congregation in preparation for the larger building. Father Chodecki purchased a lot, the corner of Amherst and Germain. And starting in 1908, the groundwork for the building was being laid. Now, am I am I misconstruing that? Am I am I am I messing that up? The groundwork for the building was being laid. Does that mean like the paperwork and the financing? Because it would, to me, at face value, it means the the groundwork, the the foundation, and that's saying 1908, guys. So this is where we're saying there's some major issues with the history that were given in the mainstream literature about buildings like this, just at a, at a real cursory level. 
there's anomalies off the first page. You know, uh, I'm not going to go through all three of these articles and read everything, but you got the basic gist of it. Population boom, and you got to expand. But the first article cited that it started in 1914. The second article cited that it uh, started in 1913. It was completed in the year of 1914. The third article is saying that it began groundwork in 1908. That's a major, major discrepancy for a building such as this, in my opinion, and I don't buy it. I, d I don't I don't buy it one bit I don't buy that they're what they're giving us for a construction photo I mean you know uh, where's the UAP ladder but I mean, look, literally what are you, what are the what are they levering this to the actual wood and what are they build bringing up that, that steeple the vanilla sky all whited out look at over here this looks all fake I mean, look at that. They had deep fakes back then, guys. I don't buy it. This, I think this was here. I think. Cool picture. I think this was here. It's not in this area over here. This is all blank. This is 1888 or 1880. Okay. I think. That this map could it be could it be is lying could it be because I don't believe that construction picture excuse me that construction picture and it would lead me to believe that at this time 1902 that structure was there they smeared it to make it look like it wasn't there just as they did the smearing of the the Pan American Exposition with, with this whole portion right here completely taken out and just completely made I mean look at it you know we'll, we'll go full screen here you know you, you zoom out this feature sticks out more than the Pan American Exposition look at you, you know you almost can't even tell that it's there this is the old electric tower that they say was made of plaster um, so when I see something like this here laid over this portion just completely covering this up stands to reason that they possibly can cover up the location of that church right here be very easy to you know and look look the street doesn't go continue on all the other streets do as far as being white 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 oh this one doesn't though this one this one doesn't almost looks like they may have changed something because there's no difference in the streets here okay you got your main your main right here and you have Peter right here and they go straight through but this looks like a little offset why is that probably because they messed around with it probably because this this thing was was here at the time they're saying because look at the so this is this is 1888 also and they're referring see they're referring to the Buffalo World's Fairgrounds in 1888 that's just that blows my mind okay here goes the psych center that I detailed in the old picture it's half it's only half built in 1888 that was a whole anomaly too that I pointed out but yeah so when you see when you see something like that that I pointed with the gravel and the uh, the gravel and the censorship in the in, a, in an old map such as this where the where a building that is is very prominent is shown to be way more prominent than a whole complex of buildings that are similar to it a whole a whole complex and this was censored so if this is censored anything could be and I believe this was censored out and look you might even have proof because Peter doesn't go all the way through I kinda just noticed that right now to be honest with you why is that different why are all the other streets whited out whited out whited out whited out not this part of Peter though hmm 
the fair is referenced in 1888 but in this map right here in 1880 it isn't there's nothing there there's, there's just this could be censored I don't know what are we looking at here guys now this is the old layout now see where we are this is the exposition and look at over here that's the building okay now let's do a building that we know when it was uh, initiated and we know when it was ended and they tell you a very very distinct dates construction started topped out and they even had open not sanctioned not erected started topped out very distinct very cut and dry very matter-of-fact when you go through three these three articles and you don't even have a Wikipedia page to, to reference that means that we can uh, begin to ask these type of questions as to why a building that's or a church that's one of the biggest churches in Buffalo has three different articles about it and they're citing three different dates of the construction uh, construction initiation date say that three times fast construction initiation date um, yep it blows my mind that more people don't bring this up and if nobody else is going to in my city I certainly will and I will certainly get more boots on the ground for you get more locations I got them all over the city they're everywhere so that is a very anomalous beautiful structure here in Buffalo again the Assumption Church of the Blessed Mary Our Lady of Black Rock beautiful beautiful architecture Romanesque revival and I have serious questions as to the uh, the erection when they the uh, when it was erected excuse me uh, when the construction actually started why the construction photos look so hokey as do all the old construction pictures of this type of architecture look as far as in, in the new world and we just have some again serious questions as to what we're told our history is from our mainstream because if this isn't if this isn't true and this is uh, if this was usurped history and uh, his story told to us then what's real and how, how do we begin to put the pieces back together it's by doing stuff like this and there's a lot of other channels out there that are doing it so I respect all of you and um, that was uh, another edition of Bushwhack and Tartaria with Dustin Berserker Bear. I hope you like it. I'll get back out uh, in the field soon enough. I don't know what lo location I'm going to do. Maybe I can get some suggestions from you guys because they're all over the place. Again, I don't want to repeat myself. I like to get on the tracks again, go to maybe some old abandoned places, leave some suggestions, go through Buffalo and go through that architectural Buffalo as an architectural museum website and hit me up with any places that you want me to go in the comments or any other anomalous structures or any kind of things that you point that I, that are that you can point out to me and I'll go there on the scene and report back for you all right that is a a wrap up of another edition Bushwhack and Tartaria I hope you liked it like share subscribe get the word out there come check us out at MeWe all right you got to subscribe to that but we're always welcome and we're always looking for more for more help because we definitely need it his story is not our story there's nothing more truer than that okay we're gonna help to find out the actual true timeline of the place that we're living in realm earth alright berserker bears out and I will report back as always take care God bless